Hi you guys, this is a quick tutorial about Microsoft Excel 2010. Uh, I'm going to be showing you 10 things that I believe everyone should know. These are must know uh, things in Excel in order to, to be able to use Excel to do exactly what you want. Uh, Excel is a powerful tool used all over the world. Um, it's great and it's really easy if you know what you're doing. So let me get started with the first thing I want to show you guys and that's going to be populating and ascending order. Uh, what populating and ascending order means is that let me hop over to sheet number two and I'm going to show you what um, what populating means. Uh, let's say I have the number one, two, three, and I want to have this number drag it down uh, and written in every single cell. Uh, you see this little box that appears in the corner when you click on a cell? You can actually drag this box, uh, click and drag it down, and notice that my number is going to populate everywhere. But there was no math being done here, it's just the same number duplicating itself over in every cell. So this occurs whenever I decide to drag, let's say I wanted only three boxes, it would be in three boxes. Now what if I have the number one and I want to go all the way to number 30 without having to type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. So I couldn't just drag the one down because I'm going to have ones 30 times, right? So if I put the number two in, in um, cell A2 and I highlight both 1 and 2 and I drag the little corner down all the way to 30 you're going to see that the numbers are going to populate in a hierarchy in, in ascending order you're going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 forward all the way to 30 so the purpose of this lesson is to show you guys that you can actually copy the contents of one thing only one thing by dragging it down and you can also populate it in ascending order and have it in you know you can have if you have to highlight both cells that's that's the key if I just drag the one over it it's gonna overdo the two and then overwrite the two and then continue down and create a bunch of ones but if I have the two in there and I highlight both it'll continue so let's say I wanna do uh, years for example um, let's say I wanna go from 1990 right I can drag it down to all the way to 30 and I'm gonna have 30 1990s but let's say I wanna go from 1990 to 20 to what is it, 2020, right? So I put 1990 and then I'm going to put in 1991 and I'm going to highlight both and drag it down to 2030 and I'll have 2019 yet because I'm not using 31, right? My math was off, but you get the idea. <laughs> All right, let me continue on to the second thing. The second thing I wanted to show you is how to sort things in both ascending and descending order. Now, sorting is very, very important. Uh, let me hop over again to sheet number two. I'm going to put in a bunch of numbers here, right? I'm going to put in one, three, five, I mean, one, three, four, two, five, uh, six, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, uh, eleven, seventeen. You get the point. I'm getting all tongue tied in here with these numbers. So I have these numbers, and they're definitely not in order, right? So. How can I sort them? How can I make this easy for me to, to sort so I can have an, an order, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth? Well, I could do it by either selecting the entire column, clicking on Sort and Filter in the top right corner, and then clicking on Custom Sort. Now, <clears throat> Custom Sort is very powerful. It allows you to sort by smallest to largest or largest to smallest. In this case, I'm going to sort it from smallest to largest. And take a look at my numbers, one, two, three, four. I had four double in there, which is going to take me to my next lesson that I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you how to remove duplicate values from a row. Um, so that's basically the entire trick to sorting. Uh, you go to sort, custom sort. Just remember custom sort. It's very important because this gives you, gives you an option to not just sort by values, but you can also sort by colors. Let's say I have um, a cell which is, let's say, yellow, yellow, and let's make one in orange and an orange, right? And let's say I want all my oranges on top. I go to sort, custom sort. I'm going to say sort column A by cell color. And I'm going to pick the color orange. And I'm going to say show me my oranges on top. And 9 and 13 will appear on top. So th that's really a, a, a really interesting thing, and this is used within other formulas as well. When you do conditional formatting and you make things red, co um, red color, and you have red all over your screen, but you want them to be on the top of the screen. Uh, let me put the yellow up top. Let me show you again how it's done. Custom sort. Remember, you have to select either the selection or the row that you want to sort. Otherwise, things will not sort great. Um, and you're going to select, let's say, the yellow, and you're going to say OK, and my yellow is going to be on top. Uh, simple. It's very simple. <clears throat> it's very fun. It's very cool. 
let's move on to the next thing. Uh, the next thing is working with selections, which I just kind of showed you how to do already. Um, when I have a list of things, let me hop over to my second sheet. Uh, if I have here one, two, three, four, five, and then I have here, let's say, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's say I only want to work with this selection. I only want to sort this selection, or I want to put a style on this selection. I want to color it red. Um, Selections is very important because you can actually select multiple cells uh, and do different things. So when you hold down control, for example, um, you can select different cells as you click on them. Uh, or if you click on, let's say, one and then you hold down shift and you click on something else, you select everything but um, the remainder. So remember, control clicking will help you select, shift clicking will help you select. Um, and let's say I just want to, I don't know, sort the numbers here. Uh, instead of sorting everything I can go here do my custom sort like I showed you guys uh, and sort from smallest to largest which is already sorted by that but let me go back here and sort it again by largest to smallest and take a look only my selection got sorted that's it the, the rest remained intact which is very important when you're playing with data because sometimes you only want to um, uh, manipulate certain data inside of the array not the entire thing so that's working with selections. Very, very simple. Always remember another thing. Here in the top corner, you can select your whole sheet at all times just by clicking on this little box. Now, when you're sorting, it's very important to remember selections because if you're not sorting the right thing or the right selection, or you're sorting one column and not the rest, uh, for example, if I have here a, a list of, of data, I'm not going to type it all in, but I'm just giving you an example. Uh, if column A, B, and C have let me type it in so you'll see what I'm saying. I'm going to put in here 1 and I'm going to type in dog. I'm going to type in here 3 and I'm going to type cat. I'm going to type here 4 and I'm going to type in here, let's say, uh, I don't know, mouse. And uh, one of them is 2 and I'm going to write the word bird. And I'm going to write in 1, 2, 3, I'm going to write 5 and I'll add in the word lion. Now, take a look what happens when I sort just this selection right here. My all the contents in cell B that are adjacent. You see, Excel right away gives me a warning and says, if you're sorting the data here that you just highlighted, the other data in column B is not going to sort with it, meaning the line is going to leave the number five when five moves away. Um, you know, when three, when two goes to the top, bird will remain in the same place. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Right now, I'm going to sort everything by well, take a look. It's sort of in ascending order, but I don't want that. What I wanted to show you was I'm going to sort just column A1 through A5. Uh, and I'm going to say continue with my selection, and I'm going to sort it with smallest to largest. And I just screwed up my whole data now, because what if I wanted bird to stay with the number 2? You see what I'm saying? So, oh, well, by the way, Control z is a great tool to undo things. Every time you make a mistake, it's okay. Just click Control z and it'll undo and take you right back to the beginning. Uh, next thing I wanted to show you is removing duplicate values. Uh, another really nice tool. Uh, let's say you have a crap load of data uh, and you have, you know, I'll use numbers again. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 9, 10. And I don't want all these extra numbers in there. Let's say I only want one nine instead of two nines, and I want one eight instead of four eights. Uh, the quickest way to do this is just highlight the column that the dupes are in, click on the data tab on the ribbon on the top, and there's a button here called remove dupes. A lot of people don't know this, believe it or not. Uh, when you click on remove dupes, it's going to say, which column would you like to remove the dupes in? And I want to remove the dupes in column A. So when I click OK now, it'll tell me 19 duplicate values were found and only 11 unique remain. So here's my 11 unique numbers, uh, 1 through 10, 11 unique numbers, and well, 11 would have been a unique number as well, but it's a blank, I selected it also. But you get the gist of it that if you have, let me undo what I just did, if you have something like this, let's say you want to filter out a list of names or, I don't know, companies or whatever the case may be, even uh, when it comes to money, you want to filter out all the one dollars out, um, you could just go to remove dupes and OK. The remove dupes button is located in the data tab of the ribbon. Um, very simple, very easy. 
let's go back to sheet number one. The next thing I wanted to show you is basic formatting. Uh, basic formatting means not everything <coughs> can be a currency or, all right, for example, let's say I have the number 10, right? I can right click on the column or the actual cell and I can choose format cells. Now let's say I want the 10 to be uh, currency. I want it to be ten dollars, and now it's ten dollars. So, what wh what is really the point of formatting? Formatting is basically the the type of, of value that's in the cell. Uh, let's say you don't want it to be money. Let's say you want it to be a date. Sometimes when you do certain things, like you put in a date and it comes up all screwed up, is because it's not formatted to be a date. You should always look at formatting. Uh, you have numerous types of of formatting. Everything starts as general. Uh, general have no specific format, just like it's written here. It could be either a string or it could be a numeric value, um, a number. Uh, it could be anything with a decimal. You actually specify where you want the decimal. Again, this is very useful. I just formatted it as a, n a number with two decimal points, which is why I have 10.00. Um, so th it's really it's really useful uh, to have. Uh, let's say you're working with a CSV and you're about to create labels, um, and you have zip codes that are missing. Um, a a zero in the beginning. For example, some states have zip codes that are something like uh, zero, uh, zero, one, two, I don't know, I'm just gonna give it a random number. Oh, you see, since I formatted it, take a look, everything that I'm gonna type in here now is gonna be, well, I only formatted the cell, but everything you type in in a formatted cell will retain that formatting. Very, very useful stuff. Um, okay, so th that goes for formatting. I know maybe I didn't give you a total uh, uh, thing about it, but you, you get my idea about why it's important to format, because if you have a number and you want it to be, let's say, a dollar and, and it reflects funny on your data, you want to format that. And formatting has everything uh, for zip codes, um, numbers, values, etc. So, yeah, that's what formatting is about. Uh, conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is a really, 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 really powerful tool uh, in Excel, and that's the sixth thing I want to show you guys. Let's say, for example, you have here. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm always gonna stick with numbers. Let's say I'm gonna stick with letters. Now I'm just gonna write the word dog, uh, cat, uh, mouse. I'm gonna write the uh, bird. I'm just gonna fill in some crap in here. Bird, lion, uh, turtle zebra and I'm gonna take this stuff and I'm just gonna make random random pasting of it I'm gonna paste the same things over and over and over and over and over and over and everything we learned can apply to this by the way I could show you everything we just learned on this one particular sheet being I have so much nonsense in here okay so let's get to conditional formatting real quick um, Conditional formatting is in the home tab of the ribbon, and what it means is that you can actually create highlight rules for cells um, that have all kinds of, of data in them that uh, in a mathematical kind of thing. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say I want to highlight all the duplicate values in this um, sheet. Um, in this case, guess what? Everything's duplicate <laughs> because everything has. This is so funny. I, I can't even show you in a, in a valid example because I'm not using the right data to show you. Conditional formatting basically allows me to highlight things that are either greater than a number, less than a number, between a certain amount of numbers, equal to something. Uh, text that contain, right? So let's say I want to only highlight dog, right? Take a look. You can see my screen in the background. I typed in dog, all the dogs became red. Um, let's say I want to highlight the word mouse, or let's say I want to highlight the word cat. Um, but you see how important it is to conditionally format these things because now I'm able to point out things within this jumble of text. Um, that is a perfect example. The rest really all apply to numbers, but text that contain is really a perfect way. So let's say I want to highlight everything that has zebra uh, and this text I want to see all my zebras and I'm able to see it but now let's say I want to count how many times zebra is in there the easy way well that now that's where I'm gonna go in and sort this I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna go to uh, custom sort and I'm gonna sort column A by cell colors and I wanna sort it by the color red which I just conditionally formatted and I'm gonna say put all my reds on top and I know that red is zebra so I'm gonna say put all my zebras on the top of the screen and you can see that I have six zebras that I randomly just chose to paste in this text 
Uh, like I said, this is extremely powerful if you use it for the right thing, but it is very cool and it's a very nice tool and great feature in Excel. Uh, and that's my little segment on conditional formatting. Uh, next is basic math. Basic math is uh, exactly what it says it is. Let's say I have here 10 and right below it I have 2. Let's say I want to divide 10 by 2. I could just say I want um, always start your formulas with equal. I'm going to say equal. I'm going to say A4 and you'll see 10 highlighted because A4 is when where the 10 value is. I'm going to say A4 the divided by sign and I'm going to say A5 and I'm going to hit enter and you're going to see that I got 5 because 10 divided by 2 is 5. So again, this is really, really easy stuff. Uh, let's say I want to get the sum of this. I can actually equal type in equals sum and I can just click on the cells that I want to have the sum of. Um, equals sum and I want the sum of 10, 2, and 5 and I get 17. So basic math is, is all formulas really in Excel. It always starts with an equal. Um, when you do equal, you could say equal um, median, for example, or all your formulas are really right here. And see, I, I, it's pointless for me to really show you by text. I kind of know what I want to do all the time. That's why I just type in like the first letter of the formula and it pops up. But if you want to review formulas, uh, there's a formula tab right here on the ribbon in Excel. And you could see here all the types of formulas that they have. They have financial formulas, uh, logical formulas, text, and math and trigonometry. And that's where I got my math from, for example, sum, or they have sin, cosine, tangent. They have all this good stuff here. Um, and it'll do everything for you. So I just showed you a quick example uh, with math. But always remember that the equal sign really produces the beginning of the formula. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple. Um, and math in Excel is really cool. I, I happen to like doing it. Um, let me go on to back to my sheet number one. And the next thing I want to show you guys is concatenating, which is another formula. Uh, concatenate basically means that if I have, let's say, a bunch of area codes, right? 718, and I'm going to put in 718 in, I don't know, let's say 10 places. And then I have phone numbers. I have basically 555, 555, 5555, right? Whatever it is. And I have a bunch of phone numbers here now. Um, and let's say I want to connect these guys together in their own cell without having to type everything out. I mean, you could do this with endless amount of data. I'm talking about uh, endless amount of data. You can have a billion rows and do this with. Um, so concatenate will essentially just put the 718 and the 555555 together. So how do you do that? You would type in equals and concatenate and you would designate the first cell you want to concatenate, the, the thing you want at the beginning of, of the stuff you're joining together uh, and that will be my A1 and I'm going to join that with B1 and you'll see the blue box uh, designating the first thing I want to concatenate and the green box that appears uh, designating what I want to concatenate and I'm just going to close the parentheses and hit enter and now you'll see that I have here the phone number 718 um, 555 5555 and it goes on and so on and so on all I did was just drag it down when you drag a formula down it's going to do that same function to the cells so if you see me dragging it down where I don't ha even have numbers, you'll see that it's going to be blank. But if I put a 1 here and a 2 here, it's going to concatenate 1 and 2 and create 12. So concatenate is a really powerful little tool that allows you to combine text from different cells together. Um, again, let's say I put in uh, ABC and then I put EFG. You'll see I have ABC, EFG in one cell. So it's a really, really cool uh, tool. Um, down here I don't even have the formula so it's not going to work but it's only wherever I paste this particular formula I can actually drag it everywhere and whatever text I put in here will concatenate with the text that I put in, in, in this particular um, column so that's what concatenating is all about it's it's pretty cool um, let me delete this sheet go back here uh, I wanted to show you guys the aging formula which is uh, something I use in business a lot actually to determine uh, the date of transactions how many transactions are over 30 days old um, and stuff like that uh, in this case I'm going to use um, let's say birthdays let's say my birthday is January 1st 1982 right and 
my concatenate folder. My concatenate formula is still there. It's funny. Okay. So let's say my birthday is January 1st, 1982. And today's date, um, you don't even need to put today's date in there. Let's say I want to know how many years or how many days. As a matter of fact, let's do it. Yeah. How many days is today to this date? 1982. January 1st, 1982 to today. Um, how would I do that? I would do that with a formula, and it's actually a simple formula. It's going to be equals, uh, and the equals is going to be today. And equals today just means today's date. I'm going to close the parentheses to signify that I want I want only today's date to be included uh, in this mathematical formula, and I'm going to say equals today minus, and I'm going to say minus a one which is the date that I put in there, uh, January 1st, 1982. And I'm going to hit enter. And it actually subtracted today's date. So today's date um, minus this date. If you take this date away, you'll, you'll see that it's um, August uh, 5th, 1929. <laughs> That's actually the subtraction between today's date, uh, July 7th, 2011, and January 1st, 1982. Um, if I format this now, take a look. I'm, this is where formatting comes in place. Let's say I want to format this to a number with no decimal, of course. I'm going to make the decimal zero. It's going to tell you that it's 10,810 days. Uh, so that's really what's today's date minus that date. So if I was born on January 1st, 1982, today I would be 10,810 days old. So that's that's how the date formula is really used. Uh, you could put in a date when you put in a certain transaction. Let me put in here 8 uh, 8 1 2011. And this was how many days? Ago? Six days ago. And let me do the same exact formula here equals today, um, today minus, and it's going to be a 3 where my data is. I'm going to hit enter, and you'll see that I got 6 because six days ago it was this date. So with the aging, you're able to actually tell um, how many days or, or the date range difference between certain cells uh, and certain values. So it's it's a really, really, really cool thing to have. Let's say uh, you have an Excel sheet of people that you build um, and you sent them invoices throughout the year and some of them have been unpaid. Uh, you can subtract today's date from them and create an aging report saying, okay, this guy hasn't paid me this amount in 30 days, 40 days, 90 days, um, 130 days, etc. So... Uh, that's what the aging uh, thing is all about, and it's really, really cool, and so all done with an Excel. This thing has so much power, it's really unbelievable. And the last thing is just styling. Uh, couldn't think of anything uh, very important more to teach. I uh, could elaborate it more in some of the other things I showed you, but uh, styling uh, is just here. I'm going to work within this sheet. Styling is just playing with fonts. <laughs> um, let's say I, I want to make this red. Uh, red with a pink background and I can make this let's say blue and I want to make my text uh, green which you can't even see so I'm going to make it a darker color to complement it back to black um, so yeah so th this is really what I wanted to show you guys uh, in formatting you have uh, not for in styling you actually have here uh, in Excel right next to the table format as a table you have a bunch of different formatting things you can accent things um, you see the day Microsoft already came up with uh, a pre uh, take a look at this as I move my mouse over the format you'll see that the basic math number seven is changing colors and changing formats and is changing styles uh, and, and that that's that's really really cool actually that they included that uh, see here normal bad good neutral bad naturally has a red background uh, good would have a green background neutral is an orange background uh, etc. So that that's really it for Excel. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go on, and there's a couple more things I would love to include, but uh, I already got tongue-tied, and <laughs> there's so much, and uh, I'm, I, may, I may actually make another video, but I just wanted to show you guys 10 very important things that I believe everyone should know. Um, I happen to consult and teach people certain things, and uh, you can always contact me on my website, dangerstudio.com, uh, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. I occasionally upload videos over there as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. So what did we really go over here? We learned how to populate um, uh, cells, how to sort cells, uh, working with selections, removing uh, duplicate values, basic formatting, conditional formatting, uh, basic math, which I wish I would have touched on a bit more on, uh, concatenating, which is an awesome thing, aging, which is a great thing in business. Uh, anyone in business should, should know how to 
create the aging formula um, and styling which is just toy basically um, I wouldn't call this advanced and I wouldn't call this beginner uh, this is just something that everyone should touch upon because you never know when you might need these skills especially when you design something in Excel or you have a task uh, you have to figure things out you have to um, like uh, decrypt and uh, decipher all these crazy numbers and data that your boss may give you or that you may have or come up with or download or etc. Uh, and that's it. So I hope you uh, enjoyed um, and thank you for watching.